One of the first antenna couplers I built was this one described by W9SCH in the GQRP Club Handbook. The first version I built had plug-in coils for different bands. You could switch between parallel and series, allowing it to match a wide range of antennas. Also notable is the tuning indicator, a light bulb that you could tune for maximum brightness. That was in series with the antenna feeders. In today's video, I'll try it with the FT817 and see if maximum brightness on the light bulb coincides with minimum indicated VSWR. This version of the coupler has one vernier reduction drive for the variable capacitor, rotary switch, the tap coil, parallel and series switch, and a tune and operate switch. That basically switches the light bulb in or out. I'll use it with a half wavelength of wire about 20 meters long. Oh, oh. At least on 80 meters, maximum brightness coincides with minimum VSWR very well. Although antenna efficiency will be poor, given the 20 meter length of wire, it does at least tune up well on 160 meters. Oh. Forty meters is not bad, but not perfect. Probably because of the antenna's very high impedance. Oh, thirty and twenty meters tune up fine. As do seventeen, fifteen, twelve, and ten. This is a look inside the coupler. The variable capacitor has a maximum capacitance of around 250 picofarad, possibly 300, that's with both sections connected together. The coil is round on a 35mm film container. I'm using fine enameled covered copper wire from an old transformer. There's probably about 40 turns on the main winding and you can just see in the center of the picture the various taps. The taps are concentrated towards one end and this coil appears to work on all bands from 160 meters through to 10 meters. On the back panel are three connections for the transceiver an RCA socket in parallel with the SO239. At that time, because they were cheaper, some of my homebrew rigs just used RCA connections, but these are in parallel. And the two connections here are for the antenna. One of those antenna connections is grounded. That would be fine for an N-fed wire. I did use this for a balanced antenna, like a G5RV, and although that's not strictly desirable, it did work okay. The signal from the transmitter is applied through a primary winding. I'd say it would be about three or four turns. Important is to get the connections around the switch right. The purpose of that switch is to switch between series and parallel configurations. That makes the antenna coupler a bit more versatile you often use series when your antenna impedance is low 
and parallel when it's higher. Tune for maximum brightness with the tune switch open. Then when you want to operate, you don't want power wasted in the light bulb, so you just close it and short out the globe. Overall, I found this a very versatile antenna coupler. It does seem to struggle when trying to match very high impedance loads, such as a half wavelength wire on 40 meters. Other than that, it seems to have a very wide matching range. If you wanted to overcome the 40 meter problem, then just attach two or three meters extra wire to the end and the impedance won't be quite as high and you should be able to match it okay. This is the coupler that I used in my early QRP rigs and I had a lot of successful contacts. The motto is tune for maximum brightness. Who needs VSWR meters and antenna analyzers anyway? Thank you.